Well, ladies and gentlemen, back by popular demand. The Monday market report is back, baby. All right. So all it took was a few weeks of doing the other report thing that I wanted to try out. Uh, but people were just, they love the Monday market report. And it doesn't matter, I guess, if it drops like on a Sunday. That's today, by the way. Or if it really does drop on a Monday or a Tuesday or a Thursday. It really doesn't matter. I think people have been endeared to the title of this particular video. The market video, again, is is hot. It's one of my biggest biggest gigs on Blue Ridge Silverhound. Of course, I'm your host, Sean, by the way, bringing this back to you. So, uh, yeah, so much for that. So, officially, Monday Market Report is back. And... Um, we are going to be talking about the same things uh, like we had been talking about in previous Monday Market Report videos. We're going to talk about the most relevant modern post-1900 graded coins to have sold here in the last week. And it doesn't stop there, all right? We're also going to take a look at coins not only on one of my favorite uh, auction sites, and that's Great Collections, by the way, that's today's video, Great collections. How much, uh, how, how big were the coin sales and, uh, you know, what's going on? What's going on in the marketplace? First week of August. Can't believe I'm saying that. We, we are officially on the back, uh, the back four months of the year. So we're on the back, back third. I can't even, I still can't believe that we are close to the holidays. Uh, but people are starting school this week. Uh, my kid starts next week. So yeah, it's that time of the year folks. But uh, I can honestly say, just taking a glance at all of the sales, not just the ones that I'm talking about today, the market did not stop. No, sir. No, ma'am. The, the coins, graded coins, high-end registry type coins ha have just been exploding, uh, especially in the last like three weeks when I did not do a physical Monday market report. Uh, but man, I'm glad to be back and I'm uh, glad to have, well, most of you here, uh, we had a couple of, um, uh, uh, people that didn't quite like the change, uh, didn't quite understand that I wanted to try and see if there was a fresh new idea, but people do love the Monday Mark report. So here we are. And I'm, uh, happy to have each and every single one of you back to, uh, yeah, back home where, where this belongs. And, uh, I figured we'd just go ahead and jump right in again. These are all sales from great collections if you guys are interested in not only purchasing putting and throwing in a bid they're one of the biggest and best auction companies for coins and currency out there greatcollections.com go ahead and uh, pay them a visit they even do consignment too if you got some coins you want to sell that's uh that's relevant to what they do and sell so uh without further ado ladies and gentlemen welcome back to uh, the the reborn Monday market report. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start it off with our subject coin of the week. Uh, I've actually seen a few of the 2009, um, the, what we call Lincoln commemorative coins. So these, of course, celebrate the hundred year anniversary of the beginning of the Lincoln Cent series. Um, you know, they had a, a few different designs. The Lincoln log type that you see here is one of the most popular. I would say the log cabin fits there right at the top as well and then you have the presidency and then uh one other one so four different reverse types so we've been beginning to see some uh some market activity on high-end graded coins now this one right here may may not seem very fancy but believe me a mint state 67 full red in any one of the four design 2009 lincoln's is uh quite the tall task o only because if you look at this one here particularly this is kind of like the the blight of these much later Lincoln scents. You get all of the the little rinse spots on here, and that's all as a result of the U.S. Mint's uh, apparent usage of their rinsing agent that left these hard spot hard water spots on the coins, and you can't remove them. Okay, you can't do a thing about them. So finding an example that exhibits uh, not quite as many of these water spots. Is a, is a challenge for those looking to pad their stats on the registry uh, reports uh, or registry sets rather. Uh, so we have mid state 67. This is the formative years type uh, that features a very early Lincoln 
sitting on a log, reading a book. And again, as you guys know, the Philadelphia dated examples of this coin does feature quite a few double to die reverses. There are dozens of them. So, uh, yeah, if you, even if you're not sending out a coin to get graded in the hopes of a 67 or higher, please do look out for those uh, doubled fingered uh, coins. Now, uh, you guys are probably interested. How much are these selling for? Um, not quite as much as you would imagine. This one realized $585. Um, we haven't seen, I don't think, a coin from the 2009 uh, date to eclipse $1,000. Uh, maybe if there's a mid state 68 that pops up one day, again, condition is everything. Uh, you know, that might be our first first crack shot at a thousand dollar 2009 Lincoln we'll see but some of you will probably end up wonder if this is going to be worthwhile to grade right now and I'm going to say a hard no all right you guys know my stance on grading these ultra modern coins uh, they are risky um, they, they are highly speculative even though the registry set loves these type of coins again it's just really difficult to obtain the highest grade uh, it, only because, you know, there are a lot of people that just aren't educated enough to know what a mid-state 67 or 68 looks like. You know, and there's a lot of different factors that goes into that. The next one that we have here is, again, one of my perennial favorite modern varieties. This is the 1995. Uh, this one got a lot of press back in the day. Uh, you know, is featured in newspapers and news outlets as being the coin new find once it dropped into uh, the hot hands of not only the banking system, but also um, just your general consumers, you know, just people getting some of these coins. Uh, of course, this is the FS101 DDO. You can see a lot of your best doubling is going to be on the word liberty along with a motto in God we trust. All right, so it seems to be like centered in this area, and that's why you have the strongest spread in these devices. You don't really see it too well in the date, but everywhere else, it's it's jib dandy. Uh, this is quite a high grade. It's mid state sixty nine full red. Uh, obviously, it's going to go in a registry set somewhere, so uh, that's the big reason why this sold for three thousand three hundred eighty six dollars and twenty five cents. That is a Rather strong sale uh, for this coin, and I would expect that it's going to continue to increase. Um, and more, I would say more people are going to be submitting these to, to the graders, uh, again, to really target that high grade. We have a 1967 Lincoln Memorial this time. Although this may appear like a really nice business strike, this is actually, in fact, a special mid-set coin. So if you guys aren't aware, I'll go ahead and share the story one more time. Uh, back in 1964, the U.S. Mint had announced that they are going to stop proof coinage for a number of years uh, due to, to the public outcry of collectors that want to continue to see proof sets even though the 90% silver standard was over. Uh, the U.S. Mint had done an about face. And what they did was they had created what they called an SMS or a special mint set. Kind of think of it as a hybrid between a general standard proof set with the strike and uh, just the overall hammered nature of that strike and combine it with a business strike. All right. So I think the original intent was to make it more proof like. Than anything else uh, but as as they began to strike these uh, whatever treatment they did to the dies uh, and of course um, the, the one big differentiator is that with proof coins they actually strike those twice I believe the M SMS's the US Mint only did one strike on them um, so there's not really a whole lot of extra opportunity to show mirrored fields and frosty devices like you would normally associate for some of your more modern proof coins all right so finding one with cambio contrast at all is extremely difficult uh this one right here uh kind of bucked the trend a little bit and uh it did grade out ngc mint state 68 red uh this particular coin realized 1471 dollars and 50 cents and uh yes th this is a registry set all day long do not invest in registry set coins uh unless you are going to put together your own registry set um, at all. 
All right, so this is a proof coin right here, and boy is it a beauty. Uh, we have a 1957. Of course, this is uh, one of the final dates before proof sets become inherently expensive. So 56, a little bit more available. You can still pick up a really nice, decent proof set for around 30 to 35 bucks. Um, proof sets have gone up here in the last uh, two years, and uh, that's only because of dwindling supply and. Uh, the pandemic, you know, made collectibles a relevant type of asset for folks. Um, but again, very rarely do the earlier proof sets exhibit uh, both a really nice ultra cameo or cameo contrast along with, in tandem, the, uh, the, the dark kind of like watery, you know, black ice type of fields that you see on this coin. This coin is just straight up beautiful. Um, it, again, yeah, it's less than 1% of the entire run of proof coins where you're able to find and spot uh, a coin with uh, these type of prerequisites with the frosty devices. Uh, this particular example right here, proof 68 Ultra Cameo by NGC, just a stunner. And the price shows it sold for $4,501.12. Here's another, I would say, registry set coin. It's a 47D, and it's a date that we don't see come up that often here on the uh, uh, in the marketplace. Uh, but we did have one here, uh, great collections that sold here um, this evening. Uh, this one is Mint State 67 Plus, full red. In addition, it is a CAC coin, so it's got that extra certification on the grade. Uh, it's it's hands down a beautiful coin and it's going to make that registry set that that's going to go into a whole lot more stronger this is a points coin right here uh sold for fourteen hundred sixty two dollars and fifty cents we do have a couple link more lincoln cents now we're getting into much tougher dates so finding these might be a little bit tougher raw i, I know that's what people like to do they either like to source out BU rolls, or maybe they like to find singular coins that aren't graded yet, uh, although if it's nice enough, um, they won't last raw. Uh, they, they will be targeted and they will be sent out to NGC and PCGS. We do have a Mid-State 68. This is a 39D. Incredibly tough, much more incremental uh, difficulty in finding anything over Mid-State 66 at this particular date. In spite of the fact that it is a Denver and they're usually more known for their much better strikes and quality than any other branch mint. Um, yeah, I mean, this one again is going to be registry set. I, I would feel very wary about even investing in a coin of this ilk. Um, I mean, it sold for $6,806.25. That's just proof right there that if another one or two of these in the same grade uh, made itself known and just came out into the marketplace out of nowhere that's going to drop the overall value of every other top pop coin uh on the list so if this is a pop 10 for example in the 68 and now there's 12 of them all right that's probably going to drop these down maybe a thousand bucks it's a pretty big deal and that's why i say any registry style top pop coin is not investable unless it's like an early classic or a key date now, this one right here, I would invest in. It's just a really tough, uh, tough era. Uh, anything teens and 20s, of course, we're talking Great Depression age, you know, World War I uh, type of era. Uh, people definitely were spending their coins. Believe it or not, this is a full red example through PCGS. I know it doesn't look like it, but this is just uh, a testament to the quality level of the coinage back in the day and it's expected too. uh the strike is not fantastic i mean you have incredibly mushy very dye deteriorated devices on both sides of the coin so as far as hammer hammered strike goes it's not on this which is strange because you usually see early teens coins with phenomenal strikes this one does not have it uh it does grade out to 66 uh full red uh, so that's kind of Kind of rare in itself. And this one uh, sold for a blistering $18,630. Again, this is a safe kind of invested investment coin right here because of what it is. We understand that coins of this particular generation are few and far between. 
On to nickels, and we have a beautiful one here. This one is actually a well-struck 1947S. All right? You don't see these quite that often, especially going into the 1950s. 40s, you know, you, you had some pretty nice, well-produced coins. Uh, you, you'd be hard-pressed to find a lot of them without any steps. I think you'd have to go to, like, maybe 1949 uh, to find uh, some of those coins without steps or smoothed over over steps. Generally, these 1940s nickels will have uh, well-struck steps. Uh, the only problem is, you know, nicks and scratches will... Uh, ensure that these will not grade full steps however this one is just fantastic it's a 67 fs that's full steps designation nice a little bit more tougher san francisco minted coin and this one sold for three thousand eight hundred and forty three dollars and finally we get to talk about the first date of jefferson nickel 1938 now compared to the 38 d buffalo uh, these weren't hoarded nearly as much. I, I think the popularity just wasn't there for the 38 Jeffersons as opposed to the Buffalo Nickel type, uh, which were all produced in Denver, by the way. However, this one right here is a stunner. It's a Mid-State 67 plus full stepper, uh, just beautiful registry set style. Even though it's the first year of the Jefferson Nickel, again, I wouldn't touch this with a 10-foot pole, if I had that kind of extraneous, you know, capital to uh, to use for an investment, this is not one of them. Uh, this one, in spite of its, like, huge grade, uh, realized $1,395.90. So, it, it seems like it should be worth more, but, you know, again, a, there's probably a 68 or 68 plus that exists for this coin. A few buffaloes on tap, starting with a uh, 36S. Uh, this is a San Francisco minted beauty here, very lustrous. Uh, NGC, Mint State 67 Plus. Again, buffalo nickels are going to be the continuous X factor in uh, U.S. type coins. And it, eventually, once a lot of the really nice inventory kind of like falls off the side of a mountain and you just can't find any in a 66 and up, uh, I think you're going to see a lot more desirability in some of those Jefferson nickels, especially the much more tougher dates. This one is also CAC certified as well. And I'm happy to say this, this one sold for $1,982.25. Another 36, this time in Denver. And it, again, um, same verse as the first. Uh, this one, not as well struck as the S-Mint that we saw previous. This one, however, is a mid-state 67, so it's a half a point grade lower, also CAC certified, and this one sold for $1,546.88. Now, even though this is a Philadelphia minted coin, and some would say Philadelphia minted anything during this, uh, this period of time is uh, a lot more plentiful in high grades, and, you know, there's just a lot more of them, and that's simply not the case. Um, 25, I've talked about this date before, and it's always been a very desirable, not only grade, but also uh, date type as well. For those that want a really nice high-end coin, but not having to pay a Denver or San Francisco price, uh, is very meaningful. Now, there are people that need this for the registry set, so let's not, uh, let's not, you know, uh, make that mistake that that's not the case. Uh, beautifully toned, by the way. I love the toning on this. Uh, this one looks like it was in an album at one point. This is a Mid-State 67 through NGC. And this one sold for $2,418.75. On to a few dimes. We got no Roosevelt's this week. But hey, how about a couple really nice Mercury dimes? Uh, starting out with a 29. Uh, this is, of course, that Great Depression age of coin. And this one is a beauty. It's a mint state 67 plus. It does have full bands, so it's got that nice heavy strike on the reverse. CAC certified, and this one is also graded by our pals at NGC. Uh, this one realized $3,494.25. Again, Mercury Dimes are just one of the most po uh, popular targets among investors uh, and collectors alike. So keep that in mind. 
And we also have a 28 D. Um, a 28 Philadelphia is just an okay kind of date. You can find them, uh, you know, with mid state full bands and all that. For a reasonable rate, but Denver and San Francisco minted coins of the twenties. It doesn't matter what it is, are uh, are continuous targets. Obviously, uh, this one right here, just a beauty. It's also part of the Hallett collection uh, that's being consigned with GC. This is a mid state sixty six plus full bands, also CAC certified. This one has a lot of things going for it. And this one brought in $8,218.12. Just a beautiful coin. And we're going to end it off on four Washington quarters. So there was actually a, uh, a well-known registry set that was being liquidated um, on great collections. Okay, And that's the Erasmus Hall Registry of Washington Quarters. So uh, they had consigned a number of the clad coins from that Erasmus Hall uh, registry set. Uh, so another registry set bites the dust, but this could possibly also mean a, an opportunity for someone else to jump in if they wanted to. Uh, starting off with an 83D, a little bit tougher date. As you guys know, they did not produce mid sets in 83, so that's why there's a shortage of mid-state type coins for this particular date. We have a PCGS mid-state 67. Good looking example. Uh, again, it's a registry set coin, uh, no doubt about it. And uh, this one sold for $1,181.25. Uh, not nearly as valuable as the Philadelphia type. That is a much more tougher, uh, not as lustrous state and mint between the two. We have a 72D this time. This one's pretty good looking, very lustrous as well. Uh, this one is a PCGS mint state 68. Again, from the Erasmus Hall registry set of Washington Quarters that was being sold this week. And this one sold for $1,243.12. So we got another registry set coin. And you guessed it, another Erasmus Hall registry coin. This time the 68. Uh, one of the tougher dates, uh, I think Denver's are, are pretty much available in nice grade, but... 68 Philadelphia's can be a little bit tough. Um, that's not quite on the level of a 69, which is like near impossible to find in a 68. But this one here is a 68 in a 68 through PCGS. And this one realized $2,081.31. Now the final coin is not an Erasmus Hall registry coin at all. As a matter of fact, it's just a beautifully toned 1951 Washington Quarter, okay, a very common date. Uh, again, toning, lovers uh, enjoy coins like this, and they'll throw a lot of extra money at it to own it, all right? It has to have the eye appeal, and usually toning equates to just originality. People want the coins that have never been played with, dip, uh, polish, none of that stuff. They, they don't want that. Uh, this one is a PCGS Mid-State 67 Plus. Also CAC certified. It has all the right things going for it. And boy, this was a strong sale. It sold for $3,047.62. Well, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful coin. Beautiful Monday market report. I'm glad to be back here with you with this again. If you guys are interested, greatcollections.com has a tremendous amount of coins week in and week out. Go ahead and check them out. Throw in some Throwing some bits. They got some older type coins too. If you're into it from like the 1800s, late 1700s, uh, federal age, colonial era stuff. They get, they have it all. If you're looking for a great piece, more likely they'll have it for you. But that's going to go ahead and do it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound, bringing to you the resurrected Monday market report. It was a lot of fun. Don't forget to like, share, or subscribe. Because if you guys did unsubscribe when I did away with the MMR, now you have a reason to come back to the Blue Ridge family. Uh, but that's it, guys. Coinaholics, we are discovering together each and every single day. Hopefully you enjoyed this report. And I shall see you on the next coin video. You guys take care. Have a great Monday. And I'll see you later on.